This week in science, we're at our local lake and we're talking about goldfish. Now, we've been importing the colorful critters from East Asia and selling them as low effort pets for centuries now, but over the past few decades, they've been cropping up in bodies of water not unlike this and absolutely taking over. There's a simple reason why this is happening. Goldfish owners who decide they can't care for them anymore will sometimes head to their nearest body of fresh water and set them free, thinking they're doing the right thing. But Gail Wallen with the BC Invasive Species Council says, don't do that. People drop them into ponds or whatever, where that little tiny goldfish actually becomes like a two pound fish that out competes all the other native fish that are there and also breeds a lot. So what you thought was one or two goldfish is 40,000 eggs later, you've now got a lot of goldfish in that lake. So you are changing the ecosystem. And this has become a Canada-wide problem. Dragon Lake in central BC, for example, has become infamous for how many goldfish are in it. And Lake Ontario is now home to an estimated 40 to 50 million of them. And while goldfish are not predators, it's not like they're totally harmless. They are eating the same food so source that your local trout would have, that your local shiners would have, things that you that are normally living in that lake body. Well, when you put in 40,000 or 80,000 fish as a starting point, you are upsetting that uh, balance of life there. Goldfish also tend to thrive in extreme environments, which are more common than ever now for various human-caused reasons. This is something Nicholas Mandrak has been studying for years. He's a biological sciences professor at the University of Toronto Scarborough. The water is warmer than, than what you would expect in the wild, and it has less oxygen. So we think that the goldfish may be becoming adapted to these extreme environments that we expect to occur in the near future in the wild as the result of climate change. And if that happens and those goldfish go from the ponds into the wild and they're better adapted to these extreme environments, um, they will likely have an, an, an even greater impact than we're currently seeing. Mandrak has also tracked goldfish invasions and human-made storm ponds and urban subdivisions. It's a sign of just how widespread this problem has become. So the big takeaway, if you no longer want your goldfish, take it back to the pet store. With This Week in Science, Curtis Doring, City News.